I, you know, I would say Ohio State was definitely always kind of top. You know, Nebraska was a close second. Um, Why Nebraska? I just love, I mean, on my visit down there, you know, at the time, remember in the, in the late nineties, I mean, they were, they, they'd come off winning a couple of national titles and they, they had some solid coaches and, you know, helping guys get to the NFL and all that kind of stuff. And, and so was, they that were, coach, were, was that coach Osborne? Yes. Coach okay. Osborne. And then Frank Solich was there. That's right. Solich. To. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it was funny. He kind of reminded me of, of Trestle in in certain ways. Um, but just, I mean, the, the culture down there is insane. I mean, you have nothing but Nebraska football, right? Like it's in the middle of, of nowhere pretty much. And, and so the amount of uh, effort and resources they put in, I mean, you, it, it was very telling when you went to visit there. I mean, they had, um, you know, like their nutrition table was, was on another level. I mean, they had steaks and lobsters and all this stuff and their weight room facilities and training facilities, you know, now Ohio state and everyone else is kind of caught up and maybe even past them, but at the time they were, um, they were kind of tops, but, you know, at the end of the day, just, you know, I was always a big Buckeye fan and, and wanted to stay close to home. And with Ohio state, when you chose Ohio state, did you realize how special that first year would be? I mean, you obviously Mo Claret, you have so many guys coming in. I think Chris Gamble is around that time. I mean, there's a ton of guys that came in at the same time, a lot of future NFL stars, um, you know, take us back to number one, let's talk about Mo Claret, you know, and how special a talent he was. You know, did you know, uh, you know, did you know him before you got to Ohio State? You know, it's not like today, you know, I mean, you remember we, we had, I think, dial up internet. Uh, we did. I, mean, I, think I, I think I went on the internet just for uh, um, a, 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 AIM. Yep. Whatever that instant messaging platform yeah. was. Um, and, but I mean, there were like, you know, uh, high school, like Max, Max Prep magazines where you'd read about guys and, you know, you'd hear stories, obviously he's not too far. I think he went to Warren Harding, wasn't too far from us. And so yeah, you knew guys like that um, were just, you know, crazy talented. Um, and uh, it, it was, it was a fun first year, man. I mean, we had, we had a great freshman class, uh, a lot of, a lot of good dudes, tons of guys that went to the NFL and um, you know, it was just lucky to be a part of it. And take us through that season, you know, because again, I don't, you guys weren't the favorites at all. Miami, for those of you who remember, they were a powerhouse back then. I mean, you're talking future NFL Hall of Fame type of talent on that team. Mm -hmm. And arguably the 2001 Hurricanes team, in my opinion, is the greatest college team of all time. If you look at the roster, I think it was yeah. Ed Reed. And we can go on the, you know, Jeremy Shockey, uh, Kellen Winslow. I mean, they were just Walsh absolutely. Gay he, I think, uh, who's a linebacker? They had a couple stud linebackers. Uh, Jonathan Vilma. Jonathan Vilma. I think DJ Johnson. There's so many different guys yeah. in that team that were just absolutely loaded. So, you know, you're going through that season, and I feel like you guys, are, we know you're good, but I don't think anybody thought you were good enough to beat a Miami, you know, per se. So take us through that season. I think there's a Purdue game that you guys won last second. Uh, I believe it was Gamble that caught the winning pass, or one of those guys caught the winning touchdown pass. Michael Jenkins, maybe. I think it was Michael Jenkins, yeah. Okay. You know, at that point, are you guys, I mean, you're taking a game by game, but do you guys realize how special this is going to become eventually? Are you guys thinking, like, we could actually do this? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think um... – you know, I mean, we had, we had a lot of studs. I mean, you know, we had Mike Doss and Matt Wilhelm and um, obviously Chris Gamble, Dustin Fox, a lot of guys that played in the NFL. I think together, I had to be over 40 players from both teams, Miami and Ohio State, that went and ended up playing the NFL. But, you know, it was funny. We, we didn't, we weren't like blowing teams out. I mean, we probably had three or four really tight games that year, you know, and sometimes not against great teams. And so that was the reason we went into the national championship game, you know, such big underdogs. And, um, but we, we just, I don't know, we, we had the ability to just hang with every team, no matter what level they were at that year. And, and it, you know, as evidenced by the last game of the year, when I mean, we, we hung with Miami all game and, you know, eked it out, you know, towards the end. And, um, and I don't know if it was, we played up to competition and played down to competition. That's probably a little bit of what was going on there, but, um, you know, our, our coaches, Trestle was hands down best coach I ever had, um, you know, phenomenal person, phenomenal guy. And, and he was always just kind of even keel, you know, and I think that just carried throughout the rest of the team. And, and take us through that Miami game, like the ups and downs, and it was such a close game and, you know, you're, you're, it's close. And then of course, McGee, he gets hurt and it kind of changed a little bit, but what was the emotions like in that game? And what was it like on the sidelines and playing in that game? Yeah, it was nuts. I mean, I just played a little special teams in that game, but still getting on the field was, was awesome. Um, you know, as a freshman and I mean, the whole atmosphere was just nuts. I mean, it was just, um, 
I mean, the, everything from, you know, my first time doing that thing, like, you know, it was from the resort we stayed in to like, there were so many Buckeye fans that traveled down there to, to driving into the stadium. And um, it was, I mean, just an awesome, awesome experience. Um, and it was like hype the whole game. Like it, it, it never calmed down. And um, so it was, it was definitely surreal. And I'll never forget watching that game. I, I think I was actually at the Hadarski's house that night, but it was just incredible to watch that you know unfold. And I I didn't think I mean no disrespect to anybody who played for Ohio State. But hey, I don't I think I don't think most people from Ohio thought. Yeah, it. I didn't yeah. think you guys had a chance. I'm like you know, they're going to get blown out tonight, and it was the exact opposite. You know, and you guys obviously played very well. And and, and some people look back at McGahee and say if he didn't get hurt, Miami would have won. We'll never know. I mean, who who knows how that will turn out? And of course, there's the end of the game, the flags, and you know, there's always there's debates like that. But the fact of the matter is, you guys hung in. You finally you won. And I think that's something when I talk to people who went to Miami, they're still bitter about it. I have a couple of friends who went to U of M and oh, yeah. U of M. Oh yeah. And, and they're, they're still, they still, oh, you guys shouldn't have won that game, you know, but right. it is what it is. I mean, and that's why I think, you know, back then with college football, especially Mike, it was such a, I mean, it's a great sport now, but I think, I feel like now it's a little more predictable in some ways. You kind of know the Alabamas. I mean, they were so good this year. It wasn't even fair. I mean, they were just blowing everybody out. Where back then, even though Miami was a powerhouse, you guys still up, upset them in the championship. And that doesn't happen as much now. I feel, um, you know, it did back then. So mm -hmm. I feel with that game, that was one of the greatest games I've ever seen. You know, yeah, I, I thought that was awesome. one of the greatest football games in general. But so now you're a champion coming off your freshman year, going your sophomore year, and you've had some big games now going in your sophomore year. I think you sacked Phillip Rivers a couple of times against NC State. And I remember watching a couple of games where you, you were coming on strong now as a sophomore. And then, of course, the injuries start happening. And, and how hard was that, Mike, to overcome those injuries, you know, not just physically, but mentally? Uh, yeah, you know, it was tough. I mean, so sophomore year, seventh game of the year, yeah, uh, I think I originally heard it against Northwestern. I went to, you know, try to sack the quarterback and missed him. And then some lineman kind of fell on my shoulder and, and then, you know, taped it up. And a couple of games later, um, you know, dislocated it. And that was my first like major injury ever. And so, um, you know, it was just like, they, we had a phenomenal medical staff and, you know, I had the surgery and then I was up and doing rehab relatively quick and obviously missed the rest of my sophomore year, but um, came back and felt great going into my junior year. Um, and then fourth game of the year ended up tearing, you know, the ACL. And that was the one that was kind of a, you know, big bummer, uh, you know, just cause you had already come back from an injury and doing all the work, but, but, you know, I had guys around me. I mean, you know, one of the guys I was in the training room with a ton was Drew Carter. I don't know if you remember him. He yeah, was remember Drew. He for us and played for the Panthers, I think, for a little bit. Dude was like the freakiest athlete ever. I think he long jumped like 26 feet. Um, <laughs> I think he did a couple years of track down at Ohio State. But um, anyway, so, you know, you had guys like that that had two, two or three ACL injuries. So you have nothing, you know, nothing to complain about. Just, you know, get in, get in there, get your work in, and, um, you know, hopefully you can get back out on the field. And did that, you know, that experience back then, obviously you own a gym now, we'll get into that a little bit later, but, you know, I'm sure that experience has a lot to do with what you do now. You know, you had to go through it yourself. So you know what it's like to train, but, you know, come back from an injury and the mental aspect of it. Cause I feel the mental aspect of it is probably even tougher than the physical aspect in some ways. So, you know, we'll get into that later, but you know, at that time, Mike, did you, did you ever have thoughts of, you know, maybe one day I want to open a gym even back in college? You know, it's funny. I, I really didn't. I mean, I, I'd always loved training. I was training you know, in a gym since I was, you know, young, 11, 12. And um, so I was always super passionate about that. And I love the idea of just going in and getting a little bit better each day. Um, but, you know, at the time in college, it was kind of like, hey, NFL is my number one goal and nothing's even close to that. Um, but but my backup option was I want to do something in business. You know, I had, no, I had no clue what that meant or what that was, but that's kind of, uh, you know, the, the plan back or the thinking back in back in college. Okay. I was wondering about that. And we'll get into your business later because there's so much to get into with that. But, you know, at the end of your career now, you're a fifth year senior, you guys are playing, um, I think, and I know you're still injured, but you're playing Florida in the national championship game. That's when you guys were absolutely loaded. You know, you, you're number one in the nation. Uh, you just came off a huge win over Michigan, another exciting game. That's Anthony Gonzalez was on that team. You know, there's tons of talent. Did you have any idea what was going to happen in that national championship game with Florida? It was kind of like the imploding moment for Ohio State. I've never seen anything like that. I don't think anybody expected it to be like that, but did you know how talented Florida was? I just remember, and, and yeah, we had Troy Smith and Ted Ginn and Ted got hurt, I think in the first quarter. He did uh, after they return, I think. Yeah. Yep. yep. And, uh, and I think that was kind of a, a definite shift in the momentum right there. 
having one of our top guys go down so early, you know, and he was such a threat. You remember he was such a threat oh, on yeah. special teams. And um, I just remember watching and I was like, holy shit, like where did they get a defensive line like this? I mean, those guys, I mean, Troy had no time, no, you know, he didn't. in the pocket. And uh, I mean, their, their ends, I mean, they were just their edge guys. I mean, they were just, they were studs. And I, I don't say don't even remember their names, but I just remember, you know, watching them and they were, they were just, freaks and uh, i can't remember everybody in that defense mike but there must have been there had to be at least five or six nfl players i know there was a, uh, oh, yeah. a great safety i can't remember who people are watching will remember but they had a, a stud linebacker i think spikes to, i think brandon spikes was on the yeah. team and yeah they yeah. were just absolutely loaded and i i didn't know a lot about those guys until that game and i realized how great them I, mean, I knew they had a good team but i thought it was going to be the opposite i thought ohio state was going to come in there and, and blow them out it was i mean i've never seen a game quite like that and i think that kind of put florida on the map tim tebow you know, then you had that little run for a while. They won two out of three, and it put their program really back on the map. Um, you know, and it was uh, you know, so Ohio State's been a part of so many in just your career. The, you know, from freshman to the fifth year senior, you got to win one, and then you lost one. And you got to kind of have those experiences. So, what what did the difference between winning and losing, Mike? You know, the pain and the joy. What was that like for you? Um, obviously, you never want to lose, especially a game like that. You know. Um, you know, totally different. I mean, after we won the first game, I remember, you know, coaches were partying and everyone was having a good time. And, and the, the whole off season was just different. You know, I think immediately the mindset after that game against Florida was like, let's get in and get back to work. And, you know, I remember seeing coaches and, and, and players, you know, back in the, uh, you know, on the grind, literally a couple of days after we got back from that trip. And so, wow. and, and I think that's like that for any, any kind of institution like that, you know? Um, but yeah, anytime you put in, that amount of work and that amount of preparation and focus. And then you have that kind of result. It, it, uh, you know, it stings, no doubt. And looking back at your Ohio state days, Mike, what was the number, you know, what was the number one lesson you learned from your five years there? Oh man. Yeah, there's, there's a lot, uh, you know, I, I would say when I look back on it, you know, I came from, um, you know, good, good neighborhood, great family. Um, you never really had much adversity growing up. And then, you know, when I, when I get into college, like I said, that second, you know, injury was, was, um, uh, you know, was the first time I really faced a, a lot of adversity. And, um, you know, I, I would, I would say um, learning to overcome that kind of stuff and, and working through really difficult periods, you know, um, after an injury like that. And, it's one of the reasons and I know, I know we're going to get into it, but, um, you know, we have a mental performance coach on staff right now, and she is just phenomenal at, you know, helping, helping our kids through, you know, periods of struggle or giving them the tools to that, you know, when they get into situations like that, you know, help kind of, you know, get out of it. Um, other than that, you know, I'd say, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of coach Tress and he'd have us read, uh, like quotes every day. So we'd, we'd get into our meetings and we'd have, it was like five or 10 minutes of, of what he called quiet time where we read a passage or read a bunch of quotes and then like take down notes. And uh, the one that really stuck with me for whatever reason is the first hour is the rudder of the day. Um, you know, meaning like get your ass up and, you know, get moving and yep. get working because that's going to direct the rest of the day. So that was a good lesson. I learned.